Yes, 
What says he? He thanks you and desires you see him often. Bring him near. Where is he? I long to feel his hand. The plate is here, <laughs> sir. <laughs> how, how fair are you, sir? I thank you, Signor Voltore. Where is the plate? My eyes are bad. <laughs> <laughs> Still thus weak. That he's not weaker. Be not far from me. Do you observe that, sir? Hearken unto me still, it will concern you. You are a happy man, sir. Know your good. I cannot now last long. You are his heir, sir. Am I? I can feel me going. <laughs> and I am glad. I am so near my haven. <laughs> Fine, gentlemen. Well, we must all go. Moscow! <laughs> <laughs> Sir, confirmed this morning the ink scarce dry upon the parchment. Oh, happy, happy me! By what good chance, sweet Mosca? He ever liked your course, sir, that first took him. I oft have heard him say how he admired men of your profession that could speak of so perplexed a tongue and loud withal, that would not wag without a fee when every word your worship but lets fall is a check in. Who's there? One knocks. I would not have you seen, sir. Mosca? When will you see a copy of the will? Anon! I will bring them to you, sir. Away, be gone. Put business in your face. Excellent! Mosca, come here. Let me kiss you. I keep you still, sir. Here is Corbaccio. Send the plate away. The vulture's gone and the old ravens come. Take you to silence and your sleep. Now shall we see a wretch who is indeed more impotent than this can feign to be, yet hopes to hop over his grave. Signor Corbaccio, you're very welcome, sir. How does your patron? The troth as he did, sir, no amends. What? Amends he? No, sir, he's rather worse. That's well. Where is he? Upon his couch, <laughs> sir, newly fallen asleep. Good. She should take an opiate here from my known doctor. He has no faith in physic. How does his apoplex? Is that strong on him still? His mouth is ever gaping and his eyelids hang. Excellent, excellent. Sure, I shall outlast him. This makes me young again a score of years. <laughs> has he made his will? What's he given me? No, sir. Nothing. <laughs> he has not made his will, sir. See, Masca, look here. I have brought back a bright check-ins. Will quite weigh down his plate. On first advantage will I re-importune him unto the maker of his testament and check and then. Good, good. Now would I counsel you. Make home with speed. There frame a will whereto you shall inscribe my master, your sole heir. And disinherit my son. This will, sir, you shall send it unto me. Now, when I enforce your more than many gifts, and last, produce your will, where without thought unto your proper issue, the stream of your diverted love hath thrown you upon my master, and made him your heir, he cannot be so stone dead, but out of mere gratitude. You must pronounce me his. And you so certain to survive him. I. Being so lusty a man. I do concede, sweet Mosca. You are he for whom I labor. I'll strike about it. Rook, go with you. Raven. I know be honest. Your worship is a precious ass. What they spell? I do desire your worship to make haste, sir. The sun is done. I go. <laughs> oh, oh, I shall burst to take your cups of laughter, <laughs> sir. But thy working and thy placing it, I cannot hold. Good rascal, let me see. Alas, sir, I can do as I am taught. Tis true, tis true. What a rare punishment is avarice to itself! I, with our help, sir! So many cares, so many maladies, so many fears attending an old age! Who is that there now? A third! Close to your couch, I can hear his voice. It is Corvino, our spruce merchant. Dead! Who's there? <laughs> Signor Corvino, come most wished for. Oh, how happy were you, sir, if you knew it now! He is not. Dead? Not dead, sir, but as good he knows no man. How shall I do then? Why, sir? I've brought him here a pearl. He still calls on you nothing but your name is in his mouth. Is your pearl orient, sir? <laughs> Venice was never an owner of the like. Signor Corvino? <gasps> he calls you. Step and give it to me. He's here, sir, and has brought you a rich pearl. 
that shoe it, sir, put it into his hand. <laughs> uh, how pitiful the sight is. Don't forget, sir, the weeping of an heir should still be laughter on the reviser. Why? Am I his heir? Sir, I may not shew the will till he be dead, but here were others all gaping here for legacies. But I, taking advantage of his meaning you, Signor Corvino, Signor Corvino, <coughs> to paper. And there I asked him whom he would have his heir. Corvino! Oh, my dear Mosca! <laughs> Does he not perceive us? No more than a blind harper. He knows no man! That's well, that's well. Are you sure he does not hear us? Sure, sir. Why, look you, credit your own sense. <clears throat> the pox approach and add to your diseases. You may come near, sir. May help, sir. His nose is like a common sewer, still running. Tis good. <laughs> you may be louder yet. And what is mouth? A very draught. Oh, stop it up. By no means. Pray you, let me. I pray you. No violence. No, sir. Why? Why should you be thus scrupulous, pray you, sir? Grateful Mosca, thou shalt share in all my fortunes. Excepting one. What's that? Your gallant wife, sir. <laughs> now is he gone. We had no other means to shoot a man's face. Mosca, thou hast today outgone thyself. <laughs> Who sat there now? I will be troubled with no more. <coughs> Pearl, plate, check-ins, good morning's purchase. Why, this is better than rod churches yet. <laughs> Who is the beauteous madam would be, sir? Why, the English knight, so apologetic would be, hath sent to know if you would be visited. Not now, some three hours. Since. I hold the squire so much. I wonder at the desperate valor of the bold English that loose their wives to all encounters. <laughs> sir, this knight, he is politic. She hath not yet the face to be dishonest, but had she Signor Corvino's wife's face? Has she so rare a face? Oh, sir, the <laughs> wonder, the blazing star of Italy! Why had I not known this before? Alas, sir, myself but yesterday discovered it. She is kept as warily as is your gold. I will go see her, though but at her window. In some disguise, then. True. I must maintain my own shape still the same. We'll think. Sir, to a wise man, all the world's his soil. But a peculiar humor of my wife laid for this height of Venice to observe. I hope you travel, sir, with license. Yes. So I dare to safely converse. How long, sir, since you left England? Seven weeks. <laughs> my name is Politic would be. Oh, that speaks him. A knight, sir? No, a poor knight, sir. Your lady lies here in Venice, the fine lady would be? Yes, sir. Uh, good Sir Politic, I cry you mercy. I have heard much of you. Oh, wow. Who be these, sir? Under oh. that window, there must be the same. Um, fellows, to mount a bank. Uh, did your instructor in the dear tongues never discourse to you of the Italian mountebanks? They are quack salvers, fellows that live by venting oils and drugs. Was that the character he gave you of them? As I remember. Uh, pity his ignorance. They are the only knowing men of Europe. And I have heard they are most lewd impostors. <clears throat> Who is it, Mount, my friend? Scoto of Mantua, sir. Scoto of Mantua? See how the people follow him. He is a man may write 10,000 crowns and make your note. Most noble gentlemen and my worthy patrons, I, your Scoto Mantuano, tell you. I and my servants are not able to make of this precious liquor so fast, and it is fetched from my lodging, my gentlemen of your city. Help, help! Be not then so sparing of your purses, honorable gentlemen, as to abridge the natural course of life. You see his end. Ah, uh, it's not good. This rare extraction, this blessed unguento, that hath only power to disperse all malignant humors that proceed either of hot, cold, moist. Or windy causes. I, I would get put in dry, too. Shh, pray you observe. To fortify the most indigest and crude stomach, for this is the physician. This, 
the medicine. This counsels, this cures, this gives the direction, this works the effect, and in sum, both may be termed an abstract and etheric and practic of the Escalapian art. Twill cost you eight crowns. How do you like it, sir? Most strangely, I. It's not his language rare. I never heard the like. You all know, honorable gentlemen, that I never valued this ampulla or vial at less than eight crowns. But for this time, I am in a humor to make a present of the small quantity my coffer contains to the rich in courtesy and to the poor for God's sake. Therefore, now, toss your handkerchiefs cheerfully, cheerfully, and be advertised that the first heroic spirit that deigns to grace me with a handkerchief I will give it a little remembrance of something. Will you be that heroic spirit, Sir Pole? Huh? See, the window has prevented you. Oh, lady, I've kissed your bounty. Oh. And for this timely grace, you have done your poor soda of magic. Spite on the devil! And my shame! No house but mine to make your scene. No windows on the whole piazza here to make your properties but mine. But mine! What should this mean, Sir Pole? This three weeks all my letters have been accepted. Indeed, sir. Best have a care. Hey, so this night I may not lose it for my mirth till night. <laughs> oh, I am wounded. Where, sir? Not without. I cannot live except thou help me, Mosca. I'm bound in conscience to your release of torment, and I will, sir. Oh, there spoke my better angel. Mosca, take my keys, employ them how thou wilt, but crown my longings, Mosca. I doubt not to bring success to your desires. I have not time to flatter you now, we'll part. And as I prosper, so applaud my art. <laughs> <laughs> Death of mine honor. City's fool, and at a public window, and you smile and fan your favors forth to give your hot spectators satisfaction. Or let me see, I think you'd rather mount. Alas, sir, be appeased. I could not think my being at the window should more now move your impatience than at other times. No, not to seek and entertain a parley with a known knave before a multitude. Why, dear sir. When do I make these excuses, or ever stir abroad, but to the church, and that's so seldom? Well, it shall be less, and thy restraint before was liberty to what I now decree. And therefore mark me. First I shall have this body light damned up. One knocks, away. Who's there? My Moscow, welcome. I guess you're new. I fear you cannot, sir. Not his recovery? Yes, sir. I'm cursed! How? 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 Why, sir? Let's go to his oil. Corbaccio and Vettori brought to this, whilst I was busy in an inner room. Death, that damned mountebank! And since, to seem the more officious and flattering of his health, there they resolved that some young woman must straight be sought out to sleep by him. Death to my hopes. Best to hire some common courtesan. No, no, it must be one that has no tricks, sir. Also, think! Think! <laughs> think, 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 sir. One of the doctors offered there his daughter how? Yes, Signor Lupo, the physician. His daughter. And a virgin, sir. Why I pray thee, give me leave. If any man but I have had this luck, the thing itself I know is no thing. Wherefore should not I as well command my blood and my affections as this dull doctor? Hear him coming. <laughs> she shall do, tis done. How, sir? We'll make all sure the party you wot of shall be mine own wife, dear Moscow. Sir, the thing, but that I would not seem to counsel you, I should have motioned to you at the first. And make your count. You have cut all their throats. Aye, a plague on't. Go, prepare him. Swear it was mine own free motion. Sir, I warrant you. But come not, sir, until I send, for I have something else to ripen for your good. You must not note. But do not you forget to send now. Fear not. 
Where are you, wife? My Celia? Wife? What? Blubbering? Come, dry those tears. I think thou thoughtst me in earnest. Come, I am not jealous. No! Faith, I am not I, nor never was. It is a poor, unprofitable humor. And see, I'll give thee cause, too, to believe it. We are invited to a solemn feast at Old Volpone's, where it shall appear how far I am free from jealousy or fear. in my blood. I know not how. Success hath made me wanton. I could skip out of my skin now like a subtle snake I am so limber. Oh, your parasite is a most precious thing, dropped from above. This is the creature had the art born with him. Toils not to learn it, but doth practice it out of most excellent nature. And such sparks are the true parasites. The others but their zanies. Who's this? Benario, old Corbaccio's son, the person I was bound to seek. Fair sir, you are happily met. Not I, by heaven, but thou shalt give me leave to hate thy baseness. Heaven be good to me. These imputations are too common, sir, and easily stuck on virtue when she's poor. This cannot be a personated passion. Prithee, forgive me and speak out thy business. Sir, it concerns you, and I must reveal it. This very hour your father is in purpose to disinherit you How? and thrust you forth a mere stranger to his blood. It is true, sir. It is impossible. I know not how to lend it any thought my father should be so unnatural. I now will tell you more. This very minute it is or will be doing. If you shall be but pleased to go with me, I'll bring you. I am amazed. Sir, if I do it not, draw your just sword and score your vengeance on my front and face. And I do suffer for you, sir. My heart weeps blood and anguish. Read. I follow thee. <laughs> Me 
you are come too soon. What meant you? Did not I say I would send? Yes, but I feared you might forget it. Did Airman hate so for his horns? Well, there's no helping it now. Stay there, I'll presently return. You know not wherefore I have brought you hither. Not well, except you told me. Now I will, hark hither. Sir, your father has sent word. What the physicians have set down, how it may concern me, what my engagements are. Before your honor? Honor? Tut. A breath. There's no such thing. What? Is my gold the worse for being touched? Clothes for being looked on? Are heaven and saints then nothing? How? Sir, think what hate they burn with toward every sin. I grant you, if I thought this were a sin, I would not urge you. Should I offer this to some young Frenchman, this were a sin? But here, tis contrary, a pious work, mere charity for physic. Oh, heaven, please you draw near, sir. Come on, what? By that sir, light! Sir, Signor Corvino here is come to see you, and is come to offer, or rather sweet prostitute, well, his own most fair and proper wife. Tis well urged. To preserve you. Do you hear, sir? Go to him with your wife. Wilt thou persist thus? Sir. Come, do I say. Kill me, rather. I will take down poison, eat burning coals, do anything. Be not thus obstinate. I have not deserved it. Prithee, sweet, good faith. Thou shalt have jewels. Do but go kiss him. Will you disgrace me thus? Nay, pray you, sir, she will consider. Would my life would serve to satisfy? Steph, if she would but speak to her! Aye, now you have put your fortune in her hands. If you were absent, she would be more coming. Let us depart. Sweet Celia, thou mayst redeem all yet. I'll say no more. If not, esteem yourself as lost. Nay. Stay there. Oh, God and his good angels. Whither, whither is shame fled human breasts? That with such ease men dare put off your honors and their own. Is that which ever was a cause of life now placed beneath the basest circumstance? <laughs> and modesty and exile made for money? I, in Corvino, and such earth-fed minds that I've never tasted the true heaven of love. Now thou art welcome. Uh, sir, nay, fly me not. <laughs> <laughs> Come, my Celia, let us prove, while we can, the sports of proof. Time will be ours forever. He at length our good will sever. Why should we defer our joys, fame, and rumor? <laughs> Some siren blast me, or dire lightning strike this my offending face. Why droops, my Celia? Thou hast in place of a base husband found a worthy lover. Use thy fortune well. <laughs> Good, sir. These things might move a mind affected with such delights, but I cannot be taken with these sensual baits. If you have conscience. Use the beggar's virtue. If thou hast wisdom, hear me, Celia. That the curious shall not know how to tell them as they flow. And the envious when they find what their number is behind. If you have a heart that may be touched, do me the grace to let me escape. If not, be bountiful and kill me. Rub these hands with what may cause an eating leprosy, anything that may disfavor me, save in my honor, and I will kneel to you, pray for you, for your health, report, and think you virtuous. Think me cold, 
frozen and impotent, and so report me. Oh, I should have done the act and then have parleyed. Yield. Oh, I'll force thee. Oh, just God! Oh, okay. oh. Bear, thou ravisher! Son of a boy! Lady, let's quit the place. It is the den of villainy. Fear not to have a guard, and he ere long shall meet his just reward. the old raven, in comes Corvino's wife, sent hither by her husband. What, with a present? No, sir, on visitation. I'll tell you how anon. And staying long, <coughs> the youth, he grows impatient, rushes forth, sees that the lady wounds me, makes her swear, or he would murder her. That was his vow, to affirm my patron to have done her rape, which, how unlike it is, you see, and hence, with that pretext, he's off to accuse his father, defame my patron, defeat you. Where is her husband? Bring him to the scrutineo. Sir, I will. This must be stopped. Oh, you do know me, sir. What's that? Will it please you, sir, to go along? Patron, go in and pray for our success. Need mixed devotion. Heaven your labor bless. actions of my day. Oh, pray you, let's see, sir, what's here? Okay. Notandum, a rat had gnawed my spur leathers. Notwithstanding, I did go forth and purchase new. But first, I cheapened sprats, and at St. Mark's I yearned. <laughs> <laughs> Same's the party in man's apparel. My lady! Oh, where? Madam, here is a gentleman. Pray you use him fairly. He seems but a youth, but he is. None. Yes, uh, one has put his face as soon into the world. Well, as... Master Woodby, this doth not become you, but knights, I see, care little for the oath they make to ladies, chiefly their own ladies. How is this? <laughs> Sweet madam, come nearer to your aid. Mary and Will, sir, since you provoke me with your impudence, 
and laughter of your light land side into your What's here? Yeah, the, the gentleman is, is of worth and of our nation. Come, I blush for you, master, would be I to a lewd harlot, a base fictitious. Hey, and you be such a one. Ah! Oh, 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 I, I must bid it you. I may carry clear your stage face. This is fine, if a. <laughs> <laughs> and do you use this often? Is this part of your wits exercise against you have occasion? Madam. This cannot be endured by any patience! What's the matter, madam? Why, the callot you have told me of, here I obtain disguise. The creature I mentioned to you is before the Senate. You shall see her. Well, I'll bring you to her. This young gentleman, I saw him land this morning at the port. <laughs> is it possible? I was my dread and wondered. Sir, I must. Blushing, say to you, I have erred, and plead your pardon. Will you go, madam? Pray, sir. <laughs> this is rare. <laughs> well, now you know the carriage of the business. Your constancy is all that is required unto the safety of it. Is the lie safely conveyed amongst us, is that sure? Yes. Then shrink not. Here they come, have done. I have another witness. If you need, sir, I can produce. Who is it? Sir, I have a purse. What is this the Senate ever heard of? The gentlewoman has been ever held of unreproved name. So has the youth. The more unnatural part, that is father. No, more of the husband. But the imposter. A period those were cited. Mm -hmm. Oh. <coughs> so but the old magnifico volpone. Why is not he here? May it please your fatherhoods, here is his advocate, himself so weak, so feeble. What are you? His parasite. Upon my faith and credit with your virtues, he is not able to endure the air. Bring him out. Your fatherhoods fit pleasures be obeyed. Then, no, most honored fathers, I must now shame the state of Venice. This lewd woman hath long been known a close adulteress oh. with him, and by this man the easy husband pardoned, oh. whose timeless bounty makes him now stand here the most unhappy, innocent person. For these, not knowing how to owe a gift, began to hate the benefit, and in place of thanks devised to, I tremble to pronounce it, that a son unto a father it was to murder him. No. And being prevented, what then did he? An act of horror, fathers. He dragged forth the aged gentleman that had there lain bedrid, wounded his servant in the face, and with this strumpet thought at once to stop his father's ends by laying infamy upon this man, to whom with blushing they should owe their lives. Well, produce your proofs. I would have Get out of your creature. Signor Corbaccio, what is he? The father. What must I do now? Uh, <laughs> your, your testimony's great. Speak to the knave, I disclaim in him. But for what cause? He is an utter stranger to my loins. Sir, I will sit down and rather wish my innocence should suffer than I resist the authority of a father. Signor Corbino? This is strange. What is this? Uh, the husband. This woman, please your fatherhoods, is a whore. Uh, no, no. Preserve uh, the honor of the court. I shall, and yet I hope that I may say these eyes have seen her glued under that piece of cedar, that fine, well-timbered gown. I hope that she is onward to her damnation, if there be a hell greater than whore and woman. His grief hath made him France, remove him hence. Go to the woman. Rare, prettily feigned again. What can you say? My wound, may it please your wisdoms, speaks for me, received in aid of my good patron, when he missed his sought for father, when that well taught dame had her cue given her to cry out a rape. Oh, mostly impudence! Father, sir, you be silent. You had your hearing free, so must they dare. And you begin to doubt the imposture here. This woman has too many moods. May her feigning not take your wisdoms. 
But this day she baited a stranger. This man saw them together on the water in a gondola. And here is the lady herself that saw them too. Produce that lady. Be resolute, madam. Aye, the same as she. Out, the chameleon harlot. I plead your pardons. I fear I have frequently transgressed against the dignity of the court. No, madam. These proofs are strong. We do believe it. Surely you may believe it, madam dear. What witness have you to make good your report? Our consciences and heaven that never fails the innocent. These are no testimonies. <laughs> Not in your court for a multitude and clamor overcomes. Nay, then you do wax insolent. Oh. Here, oh. here, the testimony comes that will convince. See here, brave fathers, here's the ravisher. The grand voluptuary! <laughs> Do not you think these limbs should affect venery? Perhaps he doth dissemble. Best try him then with goats or burning irons. <laughs> oh, my most equal hearers, if these deeds, acts of this bold and most exorbitant strain may pass with sufferance, what one citizen but owes the forfeit of his life, yea, fame, to him that dares traduce him. Which of you are safe, my honored fathers? I would ask, with leave of your grave fatherhoods, if their plot have any face or color like to truth. I crave your care of this good gentleman, whose life is much endangered by their fable. And as for them, I will conclude with this that vicious persons, when they're hot and fleshed, in impious acts their constancy abounds. Damned deeds are done with greatest confidence. Mm. Take them mm. in custody and sever them. It's just pity, just like Froggy should live. Let the old gentleman be returned with care. Mm. I'm sorry, I'm too to have wronged him. You have done a worthy service to the state, sir, in their discovery. You shall hear ere night with punishment the court decreed upon them. We thank your fatherhoods. How like you it? Rare, they're bound to erect your statue in St. Mark's. Signor Corpino, I would have you go and shoot yourself that you have conquered. Yes. It was much better that you should profess yourself a couple thus than that the other should have been proved. I trust thee, Mosca. As your own soul, sir. Mosca! Now for your business, sir. How have you business? Yes, yours, sir. Dispatch it and there's for thee. How to fall bones? What horrid strange offense did he commit against nature in his youth worthy this age? You see, sir, how I work unto your ends. Take you no notice. I'll leave you. All this yours, the devil and all. Good advocate. Madam, I will take you home. No, I'll go see your patron. <laughs> that you shall not. I'll tell you what. My purpose is Well, I am here, and all this brunt is past. Oh, for God, my leg had began to have the cramp. And I apprehended straight some power had struck me with a dead palsy. Well, I must be merry. <laughs> Any device now of some rare ingenious knavery would make me up again. So, 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 True, thou hast played thy prize, my precious Mosca. Nay, sir, to call the court. Right, that yet to me is the strangest, for thou hast borne it. Each of them so possessed and stuffed with his own hopes that anything unto the contrary never so palpable, they will persist it. Like a temptation of the devil. Right, sir, but confess, sir, were you not daunted? In good faith, I was a little in a mist, but not dejected, never but still myself. For thy sake, I will begin even now to vex them all this very instant. Good sir. Call the dwarf. Nano. Oh. Good. Straight take out the street says, I am 
dead, imputed to the grief of this late slander. <laughs> what do you mean, sir? Oh, I shall instantly have my vulture raven crow come flying hither on the news. <laughs> it will be rare, sir, but what, sir, if they ask after the body? Uh, say it was corrupted. I say it stunk, sir. Anything? <laughs> what thou wilt? Hold. Here is my will. Oh, it will afford me a rare meal of laughter. I've fixed some already. Look. It is the vulture. All to my place. Thou to my posture. How now, my Mosca? Turkey carpets nine. Where's the will? Is it done, Mosca? Several velvets. Eight. Mosca, is the thread spun? Mosca, the will. Hmm. Six chests of diaper. Four of damas. There. Is that the will? Mosca the heir! What's that? Oh, these are out of hope. I am sure the man. But Mosca, is this in earnest? Or do you but delude me? I am very busy. Good man, it is a fortune thrown upon me. Quintum one salt of agate, not my seeking. Do you hear, sir? Tomorrow or next day, I shall be a pleasure to talk with you all. Is this my large hope's issue? Sir, I must have a fairer answer. Madam, marry and shall. Pray you, fairly quit my house. Nay, raise no tempest with your looks. Go home, go, be melancholy. <laughs> Mosca, pray you a word. Lord, will you not take your dispatch hence yet? Hear you, do not you know I know you an ass. Go home, be melancholy too, or mad. Mosca, the heir, harlot, thou hast gold me. Yes, sir, stop your mouth, or I shall draw the only tooth is left. Go home and die, and stink away. Ah! Now, my faithful Mosca, I find thy constancy. Why? Who are you? Reverence, sir, good faith, I am grieved for you. But I protest, sir, it was cast upon me, but that the will of the dead must be observed. Good faith, you look as you were costed. Best go home, sir. Oh, oh let me embrace thee, Mosca! Oh, go, straight take my habit. Walk about the streets, be seen, torment them more. Oh, my recovery shall recover all. But I could yet but think on some disguise to meet them in and ask them questions. Sir, I can fit you. Yes, thou. Yes, I know one of the commandatory, sir, like you. Oh, a rare disguise in answering thy brain. I shall be a sharp disease unto them. Mm -hmm. Sir, you must look for curses. Till they burst. The fox fares ever best when he is cursed. Am I then like him? Oh, sir, you are he. No man can sever you. Good. But what am I? Oh, for heaven, a brave clarissimo. Thou becomest it. Pity thou wert not born one. If I can hold my maid one, it will be well. I'll go see what news first at the court. To do so. My fox is out of his hole, and ere he shall venture, I'll make him languish in his borrowed case. So, now I have the keys and am possessed. I am his heir. Let his sport pay for it. This is called the fox trap. Huh. They say the court is set. We must maintain our first tale good for both our reputations. Why, mine's no tale. My son would there have killed me. That's true. I had forgotten. Mine is, I'm sure. See, in our habit, see the impudent varlet. That I can shoot mine eyes at him like gunstones. Oh, but this is true, sir, of the parasite. Monster! In good faith, sir, I'm heartily grieved a beard of your grave length should be so overreached. Nay! Who thinks you that are so trade in the world? A witty merchant, the fine bird Corvino, should not have sung your shame and dropped your cheese. Do let the fox laugh at your emptiness. Sirrah, you think the privilege of the place can warrant your abuses? Come you hither, you self perceive, sir. Do you, I dare beat you, approach. Oh, hey, sir, I do know your valor well. 
Terry, I'd speak with you. Sir, sir, another time. <laughs> well, flesh fly, it is summer with you now. Your winter will come on. Good advocate, prithee not rail. Thou wilt make a solecism, as madam says. Get you a big and more, your brain breaks loose. Well, sir. Sir, the court intro stays for you. Let your mercy once win. I am distracted. What will he do now? Will he betray himself? I have abused out of most covetous ends. The man is mad. He is possessed. For which I here prostrate myself at your offended feet. Uh, all right. Oh, heaven, how just thou art. I am caught in mine own noose. Be constant, sir. Not now can help but impudence. <laughs> It is only conscience, conscience, my good sires, that makes me now tell truth. That parasite, that knave, hath been the instrument of all. Where is that knave? Fetch it. I go. <laughs> Great fathers, the man is distracted. He confessed it now, for hoping to be old Volpone's heir, who now is dead. Is Volpone dead? Then, since, grave fathers. Oh, sure, vengeance. Stay, then he was no deceiver. Oh, no, none. The parasite, grave fathers. He does speak out of mere envy, because the servants made the thing he gaped for. Pleaseth your wisdoms to view these certain notes. The devil has. They speak clear truth. The devil has entered him. <laughs> we have done ill by a public officer to send for him, if he be heir. For whom? Him that they call the parasite. Oh, the Santa Labyrinth. I do. Beseech your father, but read but those. To make a snare for my own neck and run my head into it willfully with laughter. <laughs> Did Master Mosca take the keys? Why so? I am further in. These are my fine conceits. This meaning may be truer than my fear. Most true. How ready is heaven to those that pray? Thou Volpone would have ravished her. He holds utterly false, knowing his impotence. Great father, she is possessed again, I say. Here comes our officer. Oh, the parasite. <clears throat> we'll straighten here, great fathers. His coming will clear all. May it please your fatherhood. Sir, the parasite willed me to tell you that his master lives, and this was only a jest. Art sure he lives? Do I live, sir? <laughs> <laughs> oh, me. Sir, you may redeem it. They said you were possessed. Fall down and seem so. <laughs> <laughs> Forswear it, know it not. <laughs> yes, I do know it well. It is my hand. Oh. But all that it contains is false. Oh. Is he not guilty then, whom you there name the parasite? More than his good patron old Volpone. Why, he is dead. Oh no, he lives. Uh, How? He lives. Lives. Here comes the gentleman. Make him way. A stool. Oh. A stool. <laughs> <laughs> a proper man, and were Volpone dead, a fit match for my daughter. Mosca, I was almost lost. Say I am living. 
Most reverend fathers, I sooner had attended your great pleasures, but that my order for the funeral of oh. my dear patron to require Mosca, whom I intend to bury like a gentleman. My mm -hmm. quick and cousin me of all. It is still stranger, more intricate. It is a match. My daughter is bestowed. <laughs> Give me that. First, I'll be hanged. Demand the advocate. Sir, did you not affirm that Valpone was alive? Yes, and he is. This gentleman told me so. Thou shalt him have. Whose drunkard is this same? I cannot now afford it you so cheap. No, what say you? I will maintain he lives with my life, and that this creature told me. Most great fathers, t'was not this for which you sent, I hope. Yeah, take him away. Mosca, wilt thou betray me? Cousin me? Away. I humbly thank your fatherhoods. Sir, are you married? They will be allied and not. I must be resolute. To the fight! <laughs> No suffering do for anything which he hath done against you. If there be, censure him. Here he doubtful stands. If not, fare jovially and clap your hands. Yeah! 